Hello everyone and in this video I will be covering all the steps which are required to configure Visual Studio Code uh, which is also known as VS Code and we will try to make our experience which is closer to the Visual Studio. So as compared to Visual Studio, VS Code is not fully preloaded with all the features and the tools but we will try to configure VS Code in such a way that we can get a closer experience and feel like Visual Studio. So let's get started with the installation part. So code.visualstudio.com is the website which you can visit in order to download the installer. And you know the best part about Visual, uh, Visual Studio Code is it supports all the platforms whether it is Linux, Windows or Mac. And you can see it over here. So these three platforms have different installers. So you can see stable as well as insiders. So I personally prefer to go for the stable ones but if you are looking for the most latest version and the features then you can absolutely go for insider versions on my machine I have already installed it so I need not to do it again but once you are done with your installation you will get the Visual Studio code looks something like this so in the center there are the most uh, commonly used commands which is for show all commands open file opening a folder and then the recent ones and on the left hand side you can see there are five icons and the first one is the explorer one so as it is self-explanatory it allows you to open the folder and navigate it in the visa, uh, visual studio code second comes the search so once your solution is open or the code base is open on the right panel you can see that your search strings come over here Third one is for Git and it is mainly for the source control. So you can connect your source control and once it is connected, you can clone the repository and you can see all the source control related things on this panel. Next is the debug. So when you are debugging, you can monitor intermediate variables. You can watch some variables. You can see some values. Everything inside this is related to debugging. And last and the most important one is the extensions. So I have already installed some, so I'm getting this installed, but in your case, it may be empty. Now, what are extensions? So like I said, Visual Studio Code is a very lightweight and it's on us. How do we configure it? And when it is coming to configuration, it is supported using the extensions. So next few minutes, we will be spanning on this particular screen where we will talk about the extensions and based on our need, based on our application, based on our uh, coding or the programming language we can choose the extensions so it means one should be aware that what all extensions are required to make the developers life easier okay as we are talking about the c sharp so let's start with our very first extension which is c sharp so as soon as you will type you can see there are a bunch of uh, extensions listed over here and the one which i'm interested in is c sharp and it is from microsoft and powered by the OmniSharp. So here you can see the details, what extension this C Sharp extension does, what are the feature it has, and the change log, it means it will tell you what all things are fixed and which version, right? So I will quickly go ahead and install this. Perfect, so once it is installed, you will get the disable and the uninstall icon over here, okay? Second important, uh, extension I would believe is the C sharp snippet so this is not from Microsoft here it is it is not from Microsoft but it is one of the very useful extension and here are the details so for any extension whatever you're installing first you should review in this bottom right panel and you can get the complete details so these are the general snippets it supports so let's say if you are doing class and doing tap tap it will create a skeleton for your class similarly for const and there are so many things for each loop for loop so you need not to go and write each and every word let's say you want to write for loop so you need not to write i equal to zero y less than that uh, xyz conditions and everything just type the for and press tap tab and it will create an empty for loop for you okay so i will quickly go ahead and install this extension as well perfect so it is installed third most important extension which i would like to go is for the icons 
to VS Code minus icons. So this this is one of the most uh, interesting one and it is to change the look and feel. So if you can see here, there are some beautiful icons coming over here. So if you are installing this particular extension, you will get almost the relevant icons in your project files. Okay, uh, but if you are not installing, it will just pull up the default ones. So I will go ahead and install this. Perfect. So it is done. Next we will see is uh, another extension is for package management. So just type here NuGet. And here you go. NuGet package manager. Again, it is not from the Microsoft, but you can still install it and get it work. So for those who are not about, uh, aware about NuGet, it is the package manager that allows you to pull in the dependencies which are outside your project and you can manage it. It is done. So these are the extensions uh, which I personally recommend, but there are a few more extensions uh, which we can, which I'm not going to install during this demo, but definitely I would suggest you. So another thing is for uh, repo management. So let's check it as your repo. It should be somewhere over here. I guess there is no space. Uh, let's type it repo and so if you will type here is your repo you should see here somewhere yeah it's like Azure repo it is actually for managing the pipelines and the git repository if you are working with the so here it is Uh, here you can see that uh, it is mainly this extension is very useful when you are working with DevOps and you are using Git for a source code. So you can see there are very easy uh, functionality and the commands available where you can create the task, create the bug. So it is mainly to for the DevOps purpose. And another important feature I could say is another important extension is Live Share. So this extension is particularly very useful when multiple people are working together and they want to share their code uh, in a real time. So in that case, you need not to check in the code if somebody else wants to look at it. So you can just install it and both the parties can have a look at it at the same time. So you can read about it more over here and how it works. So having said that, uh, one last thing I would like to tell you is, let's say if you want to see the list of all the installed extensions. So in that case, you can just type installed and these are the installed extensions which I am having. So similarly, you will be having your own list. Okay, so let's go ahead and I believe we are done with the basics now and let's get ready for the first project which we are going to create. So now the important thing which I am telling now is when we are dealing with VS Code, most of the things works with commands and when you are doing something with command for the very first time, it's usually slightly difficult to remember those until and unless it is handy and we are through it. Right, so for what all commands are available, here is the great list. So you can just Google it, .NET CLI overview and you will get the list of commands. So these are the basic commands which we need. And these are the project modification related commands and everything. So let's go and click on one of these commands. I will click on new and see this is the command .NET new. And what it does is it creates a new project configuration file and the solution. And here you can see the syntax actually. Now. If you really want to have a look at the examples, I believe if you will scroll down, 
there are examples which really help for any new see here it is so if you want to create a new console application you just have to write this dot net new console for f sharp this is the way how we used to create a console application so here you will have a bunch of commands and their examples which uh, any person doing it for the first time can use it now on the top you can see menu options so most of these are self-explanatory but i would recommend going it to the, this one command palette this one uh, is the uh, option which you will be using very extensively okay and it includes all the basic functions which we need during our coding, right? Start debugging, putting breakpoints, or checking for the updates. All these things, you can just tap it here and it will help you out. Now, when we are working with commands, we need a terminal window. Go to terminal, open it here. So bottom and it supports all these types of terminals powershell windows command prompt gish bash git bash and javascript debug terminal now either you write it over here or you go and uh, provide this terminal commands outside the vs code it doesn't make any difference so what we will be doing is we will go to our directory and we'll tap cmd so it will open a command prompt for me and you will notice that it open on the same place right now i will be creating a console application so to get started with that what we will be doing is let's type the first command which is dot net new and now rather than directly creating the project what we will be doing, we will go with a traditional way. Like first we will create a solution file, then we will push in the projects, right? So let's go and create a solution file. And for that, .NET new SLN minus N minus N is for the name. And I will give name demo solution. Okay, demo. Let's say demo solution. Okay, press enter and it will show you the message that solution created successfully in MI. Okay, so template file was created successfully. Perfect. Let's wait for a second so that you can get our command prompt back. Okay, now I will quickly go and verify it. So if you will do DIR, you can see that yes, it is really created. Now next thing what we need to do is we need to create a console application. So for that, again, we need a .NET new. Uh, it is console. So I will write console hyphen N. And I need to give some name to my console application. So let's call it demo app. Okay. Okay, it's created successfully. Perfect. Let's do DIR one more time. And you can see that demo app is created. And inside demo app, if you will go, I can show you in Windows Explorer. There is a CS proj file created. Perfect. Now, till here, we have created the project. We have created the solution. But we didn't maintain or uh, create any association between these two files, right? So, both these are independent and the solution file doesn't know that it has to be associated with the csproj file, right? So how to make that association? So for that, let's type in another command, .NET, and we want to associate solution. So sln, give the name of our solution, which is demo solution dot sln. And with that, we want to associate something. So give the add keyword. Then what we want to associate? It's the csproj file. So just give the name. So csproj file is under demo app. There is csproj. Okay, as soon as I will click, 
it says that it didn't find it means somewhere we did some mistake in our project file path right so let's quickly navigate it uh, it's damp so there is damp app and this time it's true and if you will do dir you should again see the same thing but if you will go and open this particular solution file you would be now let's not open it from here let's go to the visual studio use our folder feature go here and where i have saved it so go to that mine and the sample so i will directly open it over here and you can see that the application which we created is coming over here right perfect now this is a solution file and you can see that it is associated with our csproj file right it means the linking which you did was absolutely correct now next thing is here is the default code let's go and run it now it is asking you if you will see at the bottom so till now we didn't provide any information that how to run this uh, c sharp program right so on the bottom panel if you will see it is showing a message require assets to build and debug are missing so would you like to add them yes so click on yes okay and once you click on yes, it will uh, recognize and identify this program as a C, uh, C sharp class. Okay, let's go here and see. Here you can see that hello world is displayed. Let's quickly change it. Welcome to my world. And if I will run it, I should see something in my bottom terminal. Okay, so it's still building. Okay, so here it is. Welcome to my world. So I hope you understand how to set up everything. And okay, before winding, I can show you one more thing. Let's say here, and I will put. I will add one variable over here and I will give it name message hello okay semicolon and here instead of doing this what I will be doing is I will be showing message okay now let's in fact you can run it from here you can choose I am also pressing simply F5 to make the things work so this time you will notice that I have added one breakpoint here. I just want to show you how things look in this debug panel. Okay, so inside debug panel you can see that there are many sections. So one is local, so it will tell you about the local variables and watch. So let's say you want to watch something. So I want to watch message. So you can add whatever you want to watch. And on the back bottom, you can see there is a call stick, which is similar to our Visual Studio. And here is the breakpoint panel on the bottom, left bottom. So it is telling that breakpoint is currently in program.cs. And you can even hover on this variable and you can see the value of that. So this is what I would like to show you for today. And hope you enjoyed setting up your machine for C-sharp code. And see you next time. Till then, thank you.